uh, let's uh, talk about what a time series is, right? I know all of you guys might already know, but just to put a, uh, put a definition to it, it is nothing but a set of observations, which is taken sequentially in time. Uh, it can be anything like your, say, the sales of a chocolate uh, from its manufacturing plant, or it can be even uh, daily temperature readings. Uh, that you have, um, that you keep recording. All of these are observations taken sequentially in time. Um, and if you look at time series as a whole, um, there are two problems which are uh, predominantly what you can see. Uh, one is uh, time series forecasting and the other is called time series classification. So time series forecasting is, is when that we have, uh, we have a history of, of time series and we, we, we want to predict how that time series is going to continue in time. Right. Uh, given the history of, say, three years history of uh, daily temperatures, what is my temperature going to be the next few days? Right. That is a forecasting task. And the other one is called a time series classification task, which is basically saying that um, um, we have a history of time series and then what is the state? Uh, for example, I'm wearing a um, watch, a smartwatch. It has an accelerator inside. So when I'm moving my hand, that is recording the accelerator is recording a time series. Uh, so suppose suppose I I'm given a, a time series like that. What is going to be the action? Like did I wave or did I punch or did I do something else with my hand? I can predict that, and that is a state that we're going to predict, and that's the classification. So <coughs> sorry. So the entire session for today and the book as well is actually focusing on uh, time series forecasting. Uh, but just one thing that you to keep in mind is that uh, whatever we are talking about forecasting uh, can easily be adapted to classification settings as well. Uh, it's a very, very small jump from forecasting to classification. Uh, so now that we have a very basic understanding of time series is right time series forecasting. So time series forecasting is something that has been uh, in, in, in use for decades. Um, people have been do, doing time series forecasting from way back in time uh, and that it's been a lot popular in the statistics and econometrics domains um, and there are a lot of methods uh, and techniques that were invented uh, probably 50 60 years it's still in use because they are very robust uh, uh, models uh, so we, we will quickly cover them uh, just to get a feel of it because these are uh, are kind of models which are been have been used um, for a long time Although new models have come, uh, we still have maintained these models uh, just as a as a benchmark, right? Like any advanced systems or any modern system that we put together, if it is not performing better than these uh, simple models, then it is not worth doing at all. So we use them as strong benchmarks. Uh, so uh, these are not the only four. There are many many methods. I'm just picked a few to just um, kind of. Uh, have a base uh, that that we have so uh, we have something called naive or moving forecast moving average which is the very very basic way of doing forecast so naive forecast is nothing but uh, you have a list of a sequence of of observations and the forecast is just the most recent observation that you've got in other words the 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 temperature for tomorrow is the same as the temperature for today that's my forecast that's a naive way of doing it um, and like moving average is slightly better than that. Uh, I'm, I'm saying that, okay, just taking the most recent one is too noisy. Uh, so I take the average of the last three days, four days or one week, et cetera. So that's going to be my forecast. So that's a very, very simple way of doing it. Uh, not very good uh, as well. Uh, and then we have uh, a whole family of methods called exponential smoothing. Uh, we have uh, single exponential smoothing, double exponential smoothing, triple exponential smoothing. All of these uh, different uh, methods cover different aspects like trend, seasonality, uh, and other uh, patterns which you can see in a, in a time series. And it's a family of methods which has which has proven the test of time. It has shown its its usefulness even now today. Um, and then we have another set of methods or another method which is called ADIMA, which is autoregressive integrated moving average. Uh, it's another battle tested method with very strong statistical foundations. Um, and it's also a, a very good alternative or contented uh, today. Uh, and we also have lesser known methods like uh, fast Fourier uh, transforms, uh, which is basically saying that um, there is something called Fourier transform. You take the history, uh, the periodic history, 
and we kind of convert it into a frequency domain. Uh, and then we pick a few top frequencies to reconstruct the time series and we can forecast it that way. Uh, so that's another way where, 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 where periodicity or seasonality is very important. Then we can use something like this. So these are the popular ways of doing time series forecasting. Right Now let's put a pin on pin here and let's shift our attention to uh, machine learning. So um, we would have, um, like a lot of you guys might already know what uh, machine, machine learning is, um, but just to put a, put, a, put a common base and just a little bit of a theoretical foundation, uh, I'll quickly take you, take one slide to just basically tell you what machine learning is all about. Um, so yeah, suppose you, Let's let's talk about it with an example, right? Suppose you're 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 faced with a problem. Uh, let's say that problem is uh, churn um, identification. Like you are you're probably a telecom um, operator, and you want to understand what which customers are going to uh, opt out and move out to another customer, another service, right? So what you have with you would be some details about a particular customer, probably his transaction history, his demographics, a lot of the information that you have. And those are your, say, your features, right? Your independent variables. So, and then you also have the target, right? You know what you want to predict, right? It is whether he churns or not. Very simple as that. So now there is an ideal target function. Let's call it G, which gives you that, right? You plug in this X to this function. The output is the target that you want. Uh, but in, in most real world, real world cases, you don't know what G is, right? G is an unknown function. Um, because if it's a known function, there's no reason for learning at all, right? Like if it's a square, you just code, code it up, which is the square of all the features and add it up and you have the answer. If it is something simple, simple, simple as that, you don't need any learning, you just need to code for it. But most cases, we don't know what it is. So this is where machine learning comes in and machine learning says that, okay, uh, I have this framework. Like I, I can take a list of features. I can take a array of features along with a few model parameters. Uh, and I have a function H which can predict a target Y hat, right? But now that we have this, right? What we really want to do is that we want to make this H, H function as close to the G function as possible. We want to approximate that G as close as possible. And for that, we use something called a data set, right? So this is basically coming from the supervised um, machine learning paradigm. Uh, there are other, other paradigms like unsupervised, self-supervised, which you're gonna, not gonna talk about in this session, but this is just about supervised. So you have a data set. Your data set means you have a set of examples. Like in the past, a lot of the customers have, have churned and I know those details, right? The people who have churned and the people who have not churned. So I have a data set like this, and then I'm going to use my, uh, there is another thing called a loss function, which basically measures the difference between my Y hat and Y. So now this is reduced to an optimization problem. I can just basically minimize this loss function by changing the model parameters and the uh, and H by extension. And such that the loss function is minimal. Y hat is equal to Y such that H is now approximating G. Right. So all of machine learning or all of supervised machine learning boils down to this. This is all that happens in all the machine learning, deep learning, everything. Right. So now this is, this is basically what, what we talk about machine learning. Right. Now we've seen these two different paradigms of, of prediction, right. One is time series forecasting in which we have a list of, or a sequence of uh, values ordered in time. And our task is to predict what is t plus one, t plus two, and t plus three, and so on, right? That is the standard time series forecasting paradigm. But we also took a detour and talked about machine learning, um, a regression. So basically machine learning, when, when the target is a continuous variable, uh, we call it regression. And when it is, we call it classification. And here it's basically a regression case, right? So basically regression, uh, we we take in a, a, a list of or a set of features and we get an output. We set of features and an output. So on the face of it, this looks like two very different paradigms of prediction. Um, but there are ways of converting time series forecasting into a regression framework. 
which is what uh, would enable us to uh, to leverage all the awesome uh, developments that's been happening in the in the machine learning and deep learning world over the last decade to watch the full Odin talks video click on the link in the description